buildings, three uh, buildings, one next to the other, and um, renting out the ground floors for for quite a, quite a, uh, some uh, money to 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 um, to shops. Um, it's very popular shopping streets. So rents are high, and and higher up, the the building was actually abandoned, and it it's it wasn't in in great shape. And I think the, the city sort of decided they need to do something about it when when you know the people of the of 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 this shop on the ground floor uh, start complaining about the leaking roof. Um, so uh, basically um the city set up competition where they wanted to to have um uh, apartments uh in those three houses the the historically the the two houses uh, uh on either sides had front doors and there would be a family living on top of their shop um but uh throughout history uh, those front doors were, were were left out, and only one door was left. So the city basically asked to make um, uh, a central uh, uh, core with uh, eight apartments, four on uh, either side. So every apartment would then be um, in in uh, let's say one and a half house. Uh, um, Kind of uh, interconnecting uh, through the party wall, and um, actually the the facades of the building are amazing. They're, they're totally uh, crazy, but the interiors are really uh, bland, a bit a bit mediocre, like like many nineteenth uh, century houses to, uh, in Antwerp. They're okay, but but um, but not to the level of what the what the elevation historically also this is uh, a picture of the of, of, of these eclectic neo baroque whatever uh, elevations but you know you can be very um, critical about about architecture like this um, generally you know in art history they're not very popular um, but if you look at it and if, if you know if you if you look at it as a designer you, you see how how they have this big arch with a balcony with a column with a with a bay window on, on top of it with a boat on top of the bay window um a balcony then then a turret with you know with angels it's 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 rather adventurous uh composition it's very rich and and not 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 too easy to to combine all these figures in a in a in a facade in a, in a convincing stack and then the middle one has this moorish lojas on top of a, of a, of a, of another window of an arch etc so 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 it's quite uh, quite amazing so you know we 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 felt that the project had to be about um bringing the interiors closer to uh these stunning uh facades um and it's essentially it wasn't like a very pres prestigious competition it felt a bit like a vulgar brief um anyway we 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 um we were very interested in this idea of 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 empathy you know with with the monument and we try to convey that empathy through making uh, reliefs uh, of of the interior this is a relief showing the the a new stair which which would um depart from the ground floor up this is uh how it eventually turned out uh there used to be a, an old stair behind the wall this is this we opened it up we adapted the floor um it's just a concrete uh, stair but we painted uh, the faces of the threads um opposite of the stair there's a there's a door to the elevator um which we integrated uh, visually you know as a, as a, as a concealed uh, door um, um 
I mean, since in a way elevators don't, don't really fit into a building like this. Um, so we've been down here and, and actually the project uh, for the rest basically starts on the, um, on the second floor. It has a third, a fourth and a fifth kind of ceiling uh, level. Mm. So I'll just take you uh, through the apartments. That's that's uh, so we stair the stair wraps up the elevator uh, comes out here and then you have basically uh, two um, uh, apartments. This is the central house. We have a apartment here, which which is partly in the one building and partly in the other building. As you can see, I mean the plans are not particularly interesting, but the there's something of a nice kind of um, aspect about having your dining room in, in one house and your salon in the other. But it sort of conflicts with um, the, the old ch uh, chimneys, which uh, um, were always positioned against uh, the outer party walls. In, this is already um, was already on site, uh, this conflict in a way I was already uh, visible and some of these chimneys had already disappeared. Here, here's a sort of photographic survey. They weren't particularly um, astonishing, rather mainstream stuff. This is um, a little bit of England. Um, so in, in discussing the project, we, we also talked about, about uh, luncheons um, and What's what's quite particular here in the in the image is the um, uh, the way uh, the fireplace is, you know, it's more like a small piece of architecture, more like a, a small building, an edicule in in the interior. And often, if you look at these uh, fireplaces in uh, in the work of merchants, often the elevations or the ornamentation of the front door or treatment of windows actually relate to the treatment of the fireplace like like it's a motif uh which which connects inside and outside and um we also felt that uh you know in our ambition to to connect inside and outside in the project uh, certain moments uh could 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 turn into figures which help to sustain uh, that feeling um so already in competition, we we had this is this is another relief we made where um, you can actually see uh, the idea that uh, the 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 problem of the of the fireplace being in the way to make connection actually uh, had the potential to turn into something uh, more exciting in a way to uh, stretch it and turn it in, into a, a door. So the problem in a way becomes something. Uh, uh, joyful. So these were drawings of um, in more in detail. We sort of struggled about how how classical we should be about uh, these things. And this is then back to the second floor apartment where we um, eventually ended up uh, making this marble frame uh, around the opening between the dining and the and the salon. So we. We're looking at this uh, figure, um, and we're 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 we were standing here. You can see the same figure. We we introduced um, uh, a big arch which hides a shaft and uh, looks down into a, a kitchen. Um, these these these. In this picture, you can see the construction on the side, but you can also see how the the idea is not to do an arch, but the idea is to connect uh, the 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 motif of the facade with uh, new figures also on the on the inside. So so there's a, some some sort of a way that um, the the we make this the this this connection a lot more uh, explicit, and 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 the disconnection between facade and um, an interior sort of 
the souls. When you step through that door, you end up in the salon, and then um, we, we 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 kept the existing uh, uh, fireplace, but we got uh, we made a cut up, uh, on top of um, the the fireplace, so um, a, a window uh, pops up, which which provides um, uh, even more, let's say, openness or transparency between. Uh, the two um, uh, spaces. This is down to um, into the bathroom of the apartment. We, we added a lot of these higher, uh, smaller windows. They're all uh, new. The, it wasn't a feature uh, in the project, but it's also a feature of the facade. Uh, it's a motif which which uh, recurs here and there. We'll, we'll, we'll go into the other apartment now. Um, um, here we we were struggling a bit with the problem of uh, of of the kitchen. The kitchen has this problem that you you know you have the you have the the ninety or one meter height of the counter, and then you have the fridge and the and the and the cupboard, which is higher, and and you you know it's a, it's always difficult to. To develop something nice out of this very practical problem, but here we um, decided to do to have the cupboard and the fridge in in a in an edicule in a figure, which um, which is more of a small building uh, connection connecting the actual kitchen with the uh, with the dining room. So so the transition between these spaces becomes uh, a little bit more. Um, you know, uh, special. As another uh, take on the idea of 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 the window on top of the the fireplace, because we here in the same it's the same arrangement of dining and salon uh, along the street with the party wall uh, in between, and then we go um, down again towards the back. Um, this is. Um, um those are the rear elevations which were also under heritage protections so we were operating in a building where all the uh, elevations and the roofs were under heritage protections protection but not the interior so we had um here we had some you can still see these the old staircase windows um which which jumped um which used to follow the stair that was a nice piece of gypsum ornament which we like to re retain. We we made a study model of um, of that space with the, with the ornament and the idea to to have um, some sort of an oh, <laughs> workable bathroom in an old uh, 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 staircase uh, space. Um, this is this is more or less the eventual solution where you you step down uh, uh, around the the shower, where um, the ornaments retained, the bath is built under it, and there's there's currently a a mirror here, uh, so it's kind of like sitting in a in a fountain. Um, I'm going up. I'm going up on another floor to uh, this apartment where we actually um, came up with an arrangement where the living room is is uh, organized uh, away from the street so so with a front and a back room and then through the kitchen you can have access to a terrace uh, on the roof in the back because here in the on this floor the facade didn't provide balconies and you could actually have have an outdoor space on top of the bathroom we were just in. So uh, here you can see from the front to the back uh, a new large cut, the dining room, and then an, another cut which leads through the kitchen onto the, the balcony. Um, so looking back again, the large cut the, and, the, and the window bay, they sort of again have a similar scale and 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 provide a connection here here we had to make some sort of a um a t-beam to to connect uh the kitchen 
uh, with, uh, with, the, with the dining room. Again, here we have the lower part of the kitchen here and, and, and this sort of semi-ante ch uh, chamber has then the, 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 the fridge and, and some cupboards. Um, and here you can see the route to the, to the terrace um, looking back. Um, sort of an L-shaped door to small storage used to be a, a corridor. Here we go down into the bedroom area of the apartment. These are studies on doing new doors in some sort of oldish way. Um, a new wardrobe with a window above. This is a, a new bathroom which drops down from like a four meter height to uh, with a curved um, ceiling in the back to 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 uh, a more uh, usual height. Um, here's uh, a small mezzanine in the children's bedroom. So there's another apartment on this floor um, where we retained the fireplaces and we made a a window here and a diagonal connection uh, here. This is, you know, it's because there was no balcony here either, the, the, the relation between the spaces could be organized uh, differently. So here you have that opening, here you have the other opening with a diagonal uh, uh, connection. In most cases, there's, there's a small level difference when, when you step uh, through the the party wall is a kind of a nice connection to uh, a bedroom. This is a not so beautiful um, a fireplace, which we kind of connected with new bits of the same marble in, into uh, into the openings. Kind of a kind of made it a little bit more special by 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 s s smearing a bit with with marble. A little bit nervous about making this this kind of edicule kitchen because <laughs> because there are quite some of these on the market also in England, <laughs> but uh, but yeah they're not they're yeah they're they're not they're not a wonderful piece of architecture, <laughs> but but I, we felt that you know we're doing it a little bit more abstract and uh, playing uh, in more interesting ways with with the relation to drawers and handles it all became a kind of a, a acceptable stuff this is um, a, again the corridor down to the bathroom with a with a um, a space we create for the, the 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 washing machine this is this is the bathroom we go a floor up so we are on the fourth floor which is lower a little bit less luxurious in a way also so that we, we tend to tone down a bit our approach on things this is another chimney door but one where only the reveals are are clad in uh, in uh, in stone so here you can see um, the door another window together then uh, nicely working with uh, the granite of the, uh, the, the, the the Venetian loggia um, that's uh, looking from the salon down again to the bathroom. Then we uh, go into the other apartment where we had a similar kitchen uh, solution, a new ceiling because we we moved. Uh, this wall back from its original position, and we and we needed to hide some some drain pipes in the in the ceiling as well. So we came up with this uh, with this ring. This is again uh, looking from the salon into the dining where you uh, there's not there's again the same motif of the of the window uh, as you can see here. Is another funny side picture of making all these uh, small uh, openings. Um, it's another uh, wardrobe. Um, this is 
um, but sort of a, a model we made of another problem, uh, another conflict between this time a fireplace a situation in in, uh, in the position of a of a bed, where we um, decide not to amputate the the, the um, a smokestack, you call it, I guess, uh, which is which a very common solution you see in Belgium in old houses. Uh, they they cut away uh, the, the the smokestack, but here the headboard um, uh, of, of 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 a bed. It's a rental apartment. Uh, kind of resolves the the issue differently, and it has some um, a little uh, uh, cupboards on both sides. Um, here's a, a connection to a bathroom. Um, which is a room in a way that uh, has this uh, folded screen uh, in it. We also designed <laughs> um, in a bit of a similar manner these these small um, uh, uh, cupboards under the sink. This is the the screen which has has some uh, sh uh, shelving in it, has a shower in it, and actually from the from the hallway where you enter, you can also hang your uh, jacket uh, in uh, another part of that uh, screen solution um, so this is this is the the shower the the, the wardrobe and the cupboards um, yes um, so now we end up in the we have end up in the in the top level where we have uh, we're actually under the roof we we've treated um, the, the the building a little bit more even more simple in a way like through the um, through the smoke uh, exhaust we here we we cut a an angular opening um, it works quite well with 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 the 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 angular shape of of of, of the brickwork of the of the um of the exhausts um and then in the back you can see this kitchen which in a way under the roof <clears throat> also has a roof uh of itself and also a little building these are all existing uh openings round openings and this is a new one we also uh made a, some sort of a of, of uh a useless fireplace in uh, in the existing uh, exhaust. Um, this is a new window in the in the in the, in the roof. Everything's been insulated. This is the other apartment. Uh, here you go. You enter again. Uh, pass by the bedrooms. Go up into um, a very high space. This is this is a huge roof up to seven meters, where we um, had the idea of introducing a, a, a mezzanine. This is this was the original situation uh, when the competition was held. This is the the mezzanine. Um, this is uh, this is the turret uh, of the of the. The right building where you can, you know, have your coffee. Coffee. We tucked the kitchen away in a in the corner next to the turret. Um, some adaptations of the of the um, exhausts. This is uh, like a, um, uh, a block which where the mezzanine uh, leans onto. Uh, Yes, more figures going up. Yeah, you can sort of look down from the mezzanine. Um, and then, you know, we we were here, but currently, you know, this this is small relief of this turret, uh, which is um, which we turn into the shower of. A, a bathroom um, 
it's quite an exciting idea to to, to shower in this uh, in this turret. The bathroom, well, this is the central part, and then there's this sort of a niche which which contains the bath. So here, you're standing in the shower and you're looking into the bathroom, into the the niche of the of the bath, and here you're you're in the bath, <laughs> uh, and you look into the shower and you you, you so, sort of see through the 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 roof light uh, onto the, the the turret. So that's the the final slide of of this one project yes thanks for that was there really you are again. <laughs> um yeah it's a really good project and you know, a really interesting mix of sort of you know your own ideas and a historical context i guess so uh, i guess i'll sort of start things off with a question that sort of falls on from that um so when you're working in a historical context like that project do you you know is it a question of how respectful or otherwise do you try to be and is it a balance of sort of um mixing your ambition for the design and the history of the building uh um, yes well what i what i what i um what i th think is really weird in in the whole world of heritage architecture is that um, um and it sort of frustrates me <laughs> is that um you know the there's this very strong desire to um to disconnect old and new from each other um so there are a few ideas on on heritage either you know you have a you have the glass box next to the old building uh, or the glass wall in the in the old building or you know you can leave everything uh in a more ruinous state and then have something pristine in it or something that's more of a rough and ready take but it's actually quite similar in its idea on disconnecting uh old from new and um i think one point this this project is also trying to make is that um you know this disconnection is is maybe a way to 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 claim a position for for contemporary architecture or you know to um to 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 leave the 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 the, the layers of time very readable and obvious but i i i i understand those arguments but i i i i, I I don't like them. <laughs> so, um, because you know, um, it's it's kind of strange. To say you're an heritage uh, uh, administration person, and and you know you you like old buildings. That's what I assume heritage people do. Mm. And it's kind of weird to 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 to. Th to actually hope that nothing, you know, that all 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 the stuff which comes next is kind of glossy and very different. Yeah, <laughs> I never really uh, got that, but I know where it comes from. It comes from an era of, let's say, the 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 mid nineteenth, late nineteenth century, where they started to dismantle old buildings to make them, you know, even more uh, convincing than they historically were so there was a, mm. a period of of falsification which uh then was followed by a modern period of destruction <laughs> straightforward destruction and then and then came the let's say the modern view of uh, on heritage which is a view um um of of uh, retaining the monument and adding very disconnected stuff uh, next to it or into it, but but I I think we should now step further, and and what I like is that we can prove as architects that you know you can do things which are fresh and you know surprising and uh, also mm. contemporary and culturally interesting, um, uh, but which engage much more uh, intimately, uh, you know, much more strongly with uh, with uh, a historical context. And I think nothing we do can be, you know, misinterpreted as being old 
Mm, definitely. You know? Yeah. Even for the simple reason that that it's a lot of MDF or whatever, you know, like yeah. you don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to be brilliant to to understand, uh, uh, even if it has a as a molding. Uh, so so, and, and in a way, I also like the the fact that that you know the the maybe the 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 unprofessional or untrained eye might not always see what's old and new. But but the professional eye will always easily uh, understand uh, what's going on. But at least it leaves you it leaves you to appreciate things, <laughs> you know, as in integral uh, and complete figures, and not not as a, as something of um, a mash uh, a mashup um, or mashup of 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 um, disconnected layers. I th I think in our lives there's already too much uh, mess, and um, <laughs> I just I just like um, uh, you know experiences to be more synthetical. Mm, definitely, um, I I think there's so much disintegration in our cities and in the experience of you know urbanity that 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 consistency is a, is a is a higher goal than than even more disintegration. Mm. Yeah. Um, do, do you want to answer? <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very good answer. <laughs> um, do you want to just stop sharing your screen as well, by the way? Um, oh, sorry, yes. Uh, that's all right. Uh, we've, we've got another question from Jason, uh, who says, uh, thanks for the talk. Do you feel like the chimney stack still holds some symbolism of the center of the house slash family today? I think Jason's also here, so if Jason wants to expand on that, then feel free. Yes. Uh, well, I, I. Yes. Go ahead. Do you want to clarify more? It's clear to me. It's, it's clear to you. Though. It's fine then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I, I like the uh, question because um, uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> no, that the the thing is, I, I, you know, we all love fireplaces. It's probably very deep in uh, in our um, in our. Uh, you know, collective memory, the, the desire to 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 see logs burn and sit around it. Um, so, um, I mean, we're we're now, you know, we shouldn't be burning logs in the center of the city. So I I miss the, or we will miss some of this action. But um, nevertheless, I, people tend to keep them even even if there's no fire burning. But they they they. They, you know, they're they're festive moments of of um, you know um, ornament and color. Uh, in a way, the the in this project I've shown the it's totally un 19th century in terms of how we you know you deal with the interior. All the interiors used to be full of wallpaper and even more color, and there wouldn't be any white. Uh, in buildings or hardly um, so 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 it's a it's a, it's totally a way of what a historical uh, interior would have been but we we like to keep these these figures you know which 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 uh, provide color and uh, and um, and have a have a presence okay you you, you um, obviously no, in in contemporary life, you, you can just buy a lot of stuff. Uh, but in, in yeah, <laughs> that's not so architectural. Then you're, uh, then you're, yeah, that's more the Lacaton Vassal idea on <laughs> living. <laughs> you just you know have this concrete bunker, and then you buy a lot of uh, funny plastic, and it also works. I have to agree. <laughs> Yes, I mean that's how the photography uh, seems to convince you know. Mm -hmm. there, uh, there was also this um, firm that came in and gave a talk uh, last week, and they actually, when they make new buildings, they also um, construct this kind of chimney stack. And then I asked them why was that? There's the idea of the center of the home as well, but um, there's they also said for ventilation or something. Um, would if you were doing a new building, would would you or a home for someone? Would you like a new one? Would you put in the chimney stack? Do you think? 
<laughs> okay, this is funny. I'll, I'll uh, so I'll, I'll go to another project. <laughs> From you, so I'll I'll use your question to 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 um to 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 jump further. Um, let me not share yet um, before I can find it. So so this is the. Oh wait, uh, I'm too fast. You're not look, you're not looking at my screen yet. Just a second. This works. Yes. Yeah, it's good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, this is my house, <laughs> and this is uh, the house of my neighbors in the back. They're very nice people, and um, so they. This is this is the house. It's you know this also typical nineteenth century house with used to be all um, plastered and white, but it was fashionable in the eighties, I think, to take off the plaster. It doesn't look great, I have to say. But that's also how they uh, pulled it, and it's not so cheap to put it back. And also in in, in the interior, there had to have been a lot of alterations. You know, they they took some parts away from the the, the stair. They there's a relatively ugly floor. That's a, a new parquet. Um, here you can see the <laughs> amputation of the of the of the uh, smokestack. Um, so in a way, you know, we we we're looking at this old house which lost a lot of um, of its charm uh, in in um, more recent renovations. And um, uh, so this is this is this this is this is the client Rika talking to me. She's also an architect, but she's she's more involved in teaching. So she she asked us to. To uh, work on the house, and in the back, you know, you had a lot of extensions which we brought back. It's a funny section, almost like a tower with a with a bit of a a garden uh, room uh, which we build new uh, against it. But we we called it a bit uh, a bit like a joke. We called it a tent uh, in the garden, and um, you know. Uh, so we were, we were kind of intrigued also maybe by the older project I, I showed first the, about the fact that, you know, you, you, you have these uh, figures in your house, in, the, in your 19th century house. So you take, out, you take off the wallpaper, um, you, you, you take out all this Baroque furniture, um, and then you, you're left with, you know, with something and you paint the walls white, but then, then you in general keep keep some of the the chimneys and you and the colorful floor and 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 you like the moldings etc but but here you know some of that was um destroyed in the past so we we thought can we can we kind of um bring bring an alternative which has the same effect or works in the same way um so essentially you know we introduced the uh, uh, a wainscoting. There's a new floor. We have this um, uh, um, uh, stud wall um, uh, where the kitchen sits behind. That's also a new feature. So we, we have a we have a truss in the in the um, in the in the tent room with uh, wooden rafters. There's um, so we took out um, the, the the lower bit of this wall. We have we have a beam which holds it up. There's a there's a, again this folded screen, uh, and then there's another um, element in the bathroom higher up. So essentially, you know, we um, we kind of came up with a lot of these new figures where old ones had uh, had disappeared or had been compromised and um so here you can see basically what 
happened spatially is that you know generally uh, there used to be a wall here you've seen in the picture it's, ve it's a very narrow moment not so attractive when you people normally you know would be invited into the front room and there would be big double doors here and the rest of the house was not so focused on representation currently we 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 don't like these double doors because it makes makes the space hard to furnish um so you you tend to bring people deeper into the house but then they always have to you know follow you uh, in a queue in a, in a rather narrow uh, corridor so we thought let's widen this space it's structurally a little bit complicated and make this more glamorous moment in the center with a view onto a kitchen people uh, here like to uh, cook a lot so this uh, image kind of conveys the idea of you know figures that make up um, the, the 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 character of the uh, of the interior um so you can see the the wainscoting we we repaired the the start of the stair uh, the stairs been held up um um so it didn't use to, it didn't uh historically i mean there would be a wall would have been a wall here there's a stud wall um this was actually restored to the original uh there's a big uh, opening here there used to be a door under the stair um and as you can see actually we 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 have this kind of awkward l-shaped revolving door with a, with a fake door on top of it so it's kind of enhances the surprise effect that you're actually not opening a door but you're opening uh the wall um and then the other door which goes to the front room uh sort of tells the same joke differently by having a door onto a, a sliding door um this is uh some of the old uh a parquet which is retained is a new floor in the kitchen this is the the, the kitchen with the stud walls bit of a showpiece here you 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 know people coming in are are walking through this much more attractive space with light coming from uh, above uh, this is the tent room where you know we have the 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 the, the, the flashy truss with the uh, curved uh, uh, rafters and you know, this is a bit of a, a key picture to understand the project we we like the idea of of this diagonal uh with a blue um wainscoting a red stud wall and and the yellow uh truss um the piano this is a this is a also a door which folds open um and then if you go up the the stair you know you again bump into this uh screen um which has a sauna and a, and a, a bathroom in it there's the, the the beam which holds up the older uh um uh wall and then uh eventually higher up we the only intervention we did was to uh, have um, have a, a bathroom in a, in an existing room which already had an amputated uh, smokestack, um, and um, so so here we we have this big pink uh, elephant in the room, um, and there's a mirror to the side which has the same curved uh, faces, so it's a stainless steel mirror. Yeah, that's basically it. I don't know if uh, if <laughs> it does <laughs> does it work as an answer? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Jason, uh, I it's interesting that they um all these houses that you're showing have they they've knocked out the um the the fireplace. Other, <laughs> <laughs> other than that. <laughs> yeah i guess uh, do you, I'm, I'm, is is the firm that you work in 
kind of specialists for this kind of refurbishment then? No, normally, you know, we wouldn't get involved in this scale of project um, so much, uh, but it's because my back neighbors are so nice and now I can look at the yellow truss from my living room and uh, <laughs> it's kind of makes gives a warm feeling. Um, uh, no, but but what is interesting about um, um, uh, certainly about the heritage context and working heritage context, it, you know, there's still quite some craftsmanship there. Um, people, you know, they 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 don't frown if you talk about you know um, um, uh, uh, filleting the marble or <laughs> or or a mosaic uh, repair of the floor. You know, like like this. There's in, in in heritage context, you know, there's 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 a lot more unusual stuff which is considered totally normal. That's nice. And the second thing which is nice is obviously that existing buildings, they they have a very strong identity which you can build on, on onto and 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 it's um you know it it's it's a nice joy to recuperate and 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 find stories within within a building. But you know what's what's kind of Maybe also interesting is that I find it really hard, for instance, in a teaching context to 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 do it with students because I don't know just 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 the amount of energy it takes to 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 identify what you can what you can recuperate from a building and you know how how it's how it's how you you know the energy you need to absorb the information there it, it it's it's a lot and I, I i i i mean i never really tried but i i i just pedagogically kind of a little bit you know not so certain whether it it works well but i i i like it but i i, I don't know i just just Teaching architecture, you know, is teaching people to make consistent building is is super difficult, and then to to do that in a in a in an existing building is 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 another step forward. So I, I don't know. Uh, I'd, no. I'd I'd say like um, as you say, keeping that the the character that the old buildings have, it's difficult, probably quite difficult to do with something new is like trying to build some kind of a uh, story as you say into um something that's entirely new more of a challenge mm -hmm. thank you yes somehow it's it's more difficult to a little bit more difficult maybe something to generate a story in a, in, a, in a setting where you build uh, a new but uh, once once you know you get going, it's quite easy to to make something consistent. And, and while an, you know an existing building is uh, yeah, there's, there's always a, a level of resistance you have to go go beyond, uh, try to get beyond. You know. I think touching on that. Do you think sort of um i i know alex you work with will um have a go at me for this but um do you think there's uh a case that architect students should be taught about working with ex existing uh, buildings more in a specific module or something no i i mean it's it's um um <laughs> I, I I don't think it's 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 a different sort of um, it's not a different job or anything you know it it's I think you use the same skills but to me it's a it's a it's a it's a next level so I think if you're really good in doing new buildings you will you will be good in doing refurbishments but mm. not necessarily the other way around you know <clears throat> so to me it's more through uh, um, in in that order, 
and uh, so I mean, let's say morally, <laughs> it, it makes a lot of sense to teach a lot of refurbishing and uh, and, and renovation work. Uh, yes, but you know, just looking at, at architecture, you know, from this, this the skill of design and composition, I. I I don't know. Maybe not so. <laughs> mm. uh, I, I believe Johanna has a question. Um, I'll, I'll let her take it away. Hi. Uh, thank you for that presentation. It was really lovely to see such high quality housing with like lots of light and kind of like playful um, historical features. Um, and it's sort of something you've you've touched on. But like, how convinced was your client getting on with keeping these existing features? Um, like, did they see beauty and the value in it, and as as well? And I suppose, how do you work out what features you want to keep and enhance, and um, what can be adapted? Like, what's your I suppose criteria to working out when you're looking at an existing building for the first time? Hmm. Yeah, are you are you are you do you have the first or second project in mind or both? Uh, have... Well, the question came from the first from the first okay. project. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, in the context of the first project, the you know the the, the, the client was was basically the city and. Um, um, Essentially, we convinced them that to to not do anything complicated, no large spans, no uh, radical breakthroughs, um, but actually, you know, to to use the budget on these smaller moments, uh, which were, you know, let's say structurally or spatially, uh, n n kind of relatively conservative, you know, keeping the room structure. Uh, and, and, and um, you know, just 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 simple uh, cutouts and opening, and and in a way, uh, like public clients generally, they you know they have a budget target, and then they want you to to stay within the target, but then they 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 don't question so much what you do with the budget. You know, they, obviously they want their program, they want their brief to be. Um, 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 uh, build. Um, so they wanted their eight departments, and you know had to be had to be um, proper uh, apartments. You know with the level of finish. You know you would expect in such a location, but but you know as long as the as all these IDs fitted in the budget, and 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 the general you know. Uh, public they were aiming for they were totally happy so in a way the, the funny thing about working with public clients is 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 um uh, generally that you know you 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 you're often a bit freer to to do stuff because I think, yeah I, i'm not sure that's the same probably in england if you haven't done, if you don't any project projects in England. So you're saying that the client was was the council, was the was the local government. Yeah. And and because of that, you were you were freer to do what you want. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the same. No, I, <laughs> in England. I mean I mean obviously I mean I think we were very lucky with the clients, really a good client and, and that's lot that they, they you know they they set up good procedures to select good designers. So absolutely not evident i i agree um but i've also been in situations you know uh, um you're building a police station and um again we we were lucky to you know end up with a wild card in the competition and and uh, get chosen but then um then you're talking to you know there may be seven people around you on a table and nobody cares how the building looks it's quite special because you know it's 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 both totally demotivating and totally interesting because if nobody cares you can do what you like 
you know, just as long as it's soundproof and waterproof and 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 airtight and whatever. So so uh, yeah, I I I I I got used also to you know working for people who are totally not interested in architecture and then doing great stuff like sort of under the radar also. And then you know yeah, you just. It's it's sometimes then it's better you know not not to talk about architecture at all. So 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 a, a lecture like this might give you the idea like ah whoa we, who is interested in these things? But then um, yeah the the answer could be in some situations not the ones I've shown but in some situation the answer could be nobody <laughs> because we didn't even explain the project like that you know uh, so <laughs> so so sometimes you know architecture is something capital a very much in the center of uh, of of the process but sometimes it's uh, it's totally you know an, under the surface <clears throat> I can show you another. Yeah, I have another. I can show you a project which is like that. Uh, wait a minute. Where is it? So we 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 uh, um. We did some of these uh, recycling deposits. Oh, wait, no, I always uh, presenter tools. Again, I say actually the same client as the first project. So I um, maybe I should maybe I should do something. I can also show our very. It's uh, yeah. I stop. It's not in my basic selection anymore. This police station. I was sort of mentally referring to. I can show that one. Um, Oh, oh, maybe I'll. I could also do a fire station. Well, <laughs> doesn't we once did a fire? We won a competition for a fire station, and we thought it was, you know, very funny to do it entirely in wood. <laughs> and then uh, apparently, you know, these some of these uh, uh, fire department, one fire department. Uh, chief was, you know, had a history of building with wood as a, you know, contractor. So he was totally fascinated by the idea. But obviously, we didn't we didn't explain the project as a as a as ha ah, is funny. We talked a lot about sustainability, uh, you know, and 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 um, making a building, you know, also atmospherically nice. But um, yeah, so so the sustainable agenda became. Also, uh, well, that, that became the official motif, which is also super uh, valid. Um, but then, obviously, you know, deep inside, we were very triggered by 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 this this mental uh, uh, kind of exotic idea of, of. But then, in Switzerland, nobody would think it's funny. Uh, well, they have a different humor anyway. But <laughs> but. Uh, but um, uh, it's super normal to build a fire station. Uh, where am I? I'm now. I'm at the police. So, so this is a. It's more like suburban Belgium. Um, this is a very long time ago, but we we won this competition where you know this is this is the market square of this. Uh, little town and it's very sprawly, but the, the the market square was very urban in a way. It had this 1930s arcade, and we felt, ah, we if 
we do a police station along the same road out more outside of of uh, the center we we could maybe copy the scale of the square and you know make something a little bit more suburban but as a as a kind of a relative to the central square next square is the supermarket <laughs> um so basically we 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 suggested to to copy the scale of the space and then you know the rest of the story was a little was more or less about making one angle of that square uh perform as a as a police station so we came up with a, a large uh, a carriage which would be one part of the of the square um and then basically the rest of the building being an l shape and um the 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 garages have this open block work the rest of the facade has block work in relief so we saved a lot of money on the on the cladding and we then spend it again on the on the brass uh reveals of uh of uh of the wooden windows this is this is the party wall it's another fascination uh, sorry, the party, the, the the cavity wall, another fascination, a bit of a funny wall where here in and outside are are made of the same uh, stuff. This is this is Otto Wagner, you know, it is Postsparkasse, where you can see the you know that the the, the front facade, they very you know sculptural, lush, and a little bit more simple on the sides and. Our building is also a bit more simple in the back. Uh, yeah, so you have um, you have the L shape to the square with the block work in relief and the big canopy, which kind of uh, uh, the alter ego of the arcade of the of the square in the center of the town. And then if you go in, you you well, we like the idea that you would be on a on a square on a smaller square again so this is what happens if you go in you you have um kind of the same treatment uh, of the building as uh, as on the outside um this is the next atrium which is the the the, the canteen basically for the police uh and there's two smaller atriums on either sides which have stairs uh, in them so on the first floor so we've been here we've been here and i've shown you the two outer atriums on the first floor you have this room large rooms uh which which um which then um kind of are shifted and you you um as this passerelle weaving uh through or connecting these different atriums so you look left right left right in these different atriums but in a way this is looking down this passerelle and um, um, looking down into the atrium in a way it's a it's a very massive building it's also very uh, transparent and has kind of a nice uh, relation of open and closed this is this is a treatment of the Facade on the outside and, and on, on the inside, we use this um, system of, of night cooling um, from the outside through the inner windows uh, to, 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 to cool the building naturally. This is the, the, the infills. We, we, we wanted also to provide some, you know, something tactile and more intimate um in 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 a, in a relatively you know barren building so it's a bit like this scene where you know you have this the 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 the, the gray stone mass and then there's some intimate uh, nook um built into it uh where you don't have cold feet and i mean in a different way you you won't have cold feet here but uh, in a different way uh, you know that there, there are these elements of these moments which are a more delicate uh, building. Uh, this is a, a collage we we've made of the building. In, it's a bit inspired by this beautiful collage of John Soane of his Bank of England. Um, 
which kind of explains how the buildings made out of, uh, of of elements in a way. Essentially, yeah. This is uh, this is it. Well, okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I wasn't really I wasn't really talking about your question. But but the funny thing is the, the so. Of, I mean, obviously, we we in the competition stage was all about the square, and 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 um, you know there were some architects involved, and they said, ah, okay, we like this idea of 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 being an angle to the square. But then then you know you win, and then the next next uh, meeting is with with policemen, and then you just talk about functionality and acoustics and 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 costing and. So the rest of the the story was 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 never about how it looked, and then eventually, you know, they 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 walk through the building side, and they're like, oh, it's a bit barren, and then and then a few months later, they start to understand, and then, and then when it when it was finished, they're like, ah, okay, <laughs> it's nice, it's sort of nice, <laughs> so so you know, so yeah, it's it's. Yeah, a lot, a lot of most of the time, you know, in in this job, you're you're you're, you're wrapping your ideas uh, into something else. Uh, I guess, you know. But then it's super important to keep keep the uh, focus, obviously. You know. Would you say it's um, important to you that your experience of your building from the outside and the inside? is uh, related or the same? That's a, also a really uh, good question. <laughs> and, you know, this project was, is, is, uh, is quite old. I think, I think we maybe won the competition in 2003 or four, maybe. I, I can't really remember. And we, it took a while before it got going. So we finished 2008. So I was, I only graduated in '99, so um, at that time I really felt uh, very comfortable with buildings which were uh, inside out the same, you know, a bit like the brutalist idea of a building. Uh, you know, in brutalism there is no real inside outside; it's a continuous physical experience, um, generally um but then then uh then i think someone in the office marius he, he, he once at a certain point he told me that uh often in victorian architecture the color schemes of the inside are complementary to the outside i don't know if it's true uh, um i don't know maybe we're talking about a, a butterfield or so um um I I think I think now I've I've more evolved maybe to my feeling to a little bit more of a sophisticated idea of the relation between inside and outside, which which is not a, 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 an idea of a continuous experience, um, but more the idea of a of a of a you know maybe like a personality you know like like you 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 know if. if if I would, you know, wear certain clothes, people would say that's weird because it's not me. Uh, so you, you, I think a, a building in a way is, is a personality and um, it doesn't need to be entirely, you know, transparent to be a, 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 a truthful. Um, Maybe it's even more interesting. It's a little bit more complex than 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 just transparent. But it should also not be anything. You know, you the, the idea of an of interior architecture as an autonomous discipline is 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 quite problematic in that re respect because um, because the total disconnection of 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 the interior fr from from the the shell of a building is 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 a terrible disintegration again of things but that's not how buildings should be 
but but it, it is it is a it it's one of the you know it's one of the more most complicated issues in in architecture the inside outside relation uh, I, I, so it's it's good to 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 look at buildings and and you know reflect on what works and doesn't work yeah in classicism it was just the same language you know but it scaled down and it you know it changed in material often changed in color that was super interesting. I, I st that's why I still like classicism. I mean, one of the reasons is that that it's so that it's so um, elastic. You know, it it just falls inside out and and reinvents itself. Is, is, is this an idea of like integrity of of honesty? Do you think? Yes, but then again, honesty not being, uh, you know, uh, this commonplace thing of transparency or, or you know, of, of, I think, I think that, the, um, uh, uh, so I don't like the word honesty a lot because architecture and honesty, it's not a very good match, you know, <laughs> all, all, all buildings are full of, you know, uh, small lies and, uh, and, and a little bit baking and and uh, you know there's there's build, you know, architecture is relatively you know rhetorical in a way so so i i wouldn't say honest but 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 um but truthful yes yeah <laughs> and, and, and integrity is also a good word i think but i think integrity has a certain tolerance tolerance which uh honesty doesn't have you know and honesty is quite black and white huh? it's, it's just i've got this lecture who keeps piping on with the phrase architectural honesty yeah and, it's... Um, a kind of admiration for that it, there's nothing wrong with be, being honest uh don't get me right but in architecture it can be bloody difficult and of, often terribly expensive also mm. cool thank you uh, i think we've got a question from tom um it's he says uh, you seem to use a lot of collages and maquettes in your development uh, what techniques do you find most useful in testing materials and appropriateness to an existing building? Sorry, you, you were a bit uh, blurry, uh, the noise. Could you repeat the last <laughs> sentence? <laughs> um, what techniques do you find most useful in testing materials and appropriateness to the existing building? Mm. Oh, that's also a nice question. I think the 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 um, the answer I give to students is all techniques. <laughs> I think it's really, I think the, the one of the clues in our job, uh, since we design buildings, we don't build them. So we always have this surrogate relation to, to the end result, you know. Um, so one of the biggest challenges is to choose the, the right medium uh, to investigate um, what you're after and make the so very often if you're stuck as a you know as a designer as a student you're actually very often stuck because of the medium you're actually stuck in the medium you're stuck because it, you know you're working on a certain scale or you're stuck because you're looking at a screen or you're you're stuck because you know you can't make the model bigger than the room you're in you know like so many reasons to to get stuck uh and very often it's 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 the medium so so i think if you if if you you're, you're capable of 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 selecting the the right medium to 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 um you know uh make choices um then you're halfway in making a good design. Mm. But okay. but uh, apart from that, we we spend uh, uh, ridiculous amounts of time on uh, collages, often when the design is already finished, um, and it's more of a of a of a hobby to fill gaps uh, in our timing or. I've also called them like presents to ourselves, because mm. if you finish a building, they're they're actually 
that's generally a certain you know joy and relief because you finish but then you also you know then all of a sudden you all these other people take over like you know you have you have this you have this thing and then you're happy with it and then someone you know just walks away and you know, <laughs> fills it with fills it with stuff you don't like <laughs> so um so just just to you know keep keep hold of what you had we we we, we sometimes make these uh these things uh, and models don't last very well so a collage can be framed and it's safe <laughs> um I, I i've got another question but if anyone else has any final questions just um put them in the chat um but yeah i, I guess i'll put mine across um you've got quite a distinct you know architectural style um you know a, a really impressive and beautiful one but um how, how did you sort of develop this and you know is there any sort of inspirations that really sort of led you to you know, doing what you do, I guess? Um, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but we're not trying to cultivate the style, but it's a little bit unavoidable because mm. yeah, you, 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 uh, you like things and then you, you do it again um but we're trying to be very receptive to to situations and then change as much as we can or reinvent our, ourselves as much as we can and basically you know it, i I, uh, I i like the idea that um you in architecture you're not you're not um you're not after this kind of uh formal uh exploration of things but you're much more like uh you know making the most out of every situation um, um but that's just a way of looking at it uh because because yeah i can't deny you know that we're also quite formal <laughs> but but it's it doesn't seem to i mean it doesn't seem to be the the focus we have it's more of the 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 the, the uh, sort of a an agenda uh, mm. or something I don't know if that makes all of sense as a um, as a difference and then um, by the second part of your question I lost um, uh, so it was I was talking about style and then you asked. Um, any sort of inspiration, oh, yeah, inspiration. yes uh yes um, um uh, i think everything uh what 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 happens here is 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 takes its inspiration from other architecture and um we also try to be you know not too reductive in the stuff we like and you know be <laughs> open to new stuff but I mean, over time, you do see that, you know, your library uh, uh, has stuff and has, doesn't have so much other stuff, but it's a, it is a big library <laughs> yeah. and it's, and it still grows and, and it, you know, it, yeah, it's just, and, and, and there's so many things you think like, oh, I want to try this as well. And um, so the idea of, uh, you know, copying and stealing is very um, uh, present in 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 our work and I, I i think students should be i also try to you convey that joy because to, to students also because um it so sometimes you know like then you think like ah we can also try this and the first five minutes it feels like yeah but that's like stealing but then but then after half an hour you know it's already changed and then yeah. merged with another id and um and in a way it's 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 um the essence of architectural culture is in you know re resemblances and and similarities because you know we we, we understand difference 
because because of the similarity uh, so this is this is really it's probably more more interesting to 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 steal stuff than to try not to make it look like anything you know mm. i mean culturally I, I, I often compare the the Chiswick House in London by Burlington to, yeah. to um, Palladio's um, um, villa. Uh, what's the what's the the, the square villa? <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> um, the 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 deep Palladian villa um, in Vicenza on the on the edge of the town. You know, with the, the yeah, the, I know that, yeah. Why can't I? Uh, it's gone from me. So. The, 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 so that villa. So anyway, I mean, essentially, I know probably 150 or 200 years later or more, Burlington built the same house in Chiswick. Mm. Um, or that's what you read in history books. And, and if you look at the plans, it looks sort of similar. But then if you've seen both buildings, they're totally different. And mm. The one is very bulky and muscular, and the other is very delicate and and a little bit. Um, um, uh, should I say? Uh, yeah, delicate is a safe word. Um, um, <laughs> anyway, the, you know this, and then all of a sudden, because you know, uh, because this this bulky brother from Italy has this delicate sister in London it makes a super interesting experience and and the palladian original becomes even more you know interesting because that's something similar which is different mm -hmm. you know like like you know you meet you meet the brother of your husband after 20 years like sort of a <laughs> so with something interesting and weird about that but but uh yeah so 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 that's that's for, that's why similarity is so interesting. Mm. I, I think and, and that's ideas. why that's why using references and uh, you know profound readings of the existing are so so valuable. Mm. I think this sort of idea of stealing has been sort of you know, present from like St Mark's Square in Venice with the you know physical theft of you know pieces of mosaic from Byzantine era and stuff like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of not something to be ashamed of of such, but you know, it's using it in the correct way, I guess. But anyway, there's um, a, a final question here from Michael, um, who says, I'm interested in the townhouse renovation project in how the humorous and playful coexist with the very, with some very serious gestures. And in particular, how the client engage with this in the during the de design process? Mm. Well, I, I, again, I, I think a, a lot of stuff we did was not so explicitly um, on the table as architectural ideas, you know? Mm. You just, we just explained how the kitchen would work or, or, or you know, where the, where the balcony would be or, um, um how you yeah how the bathroom would work so 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 maybe we showed plans but not necessarily the section um whereas the section was more the architectural idea and the plan not or vice versa so so it's um it's 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 all it's also about you know how 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 you explain stuff to to different audiences. I, 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 I yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So you, you you have to. It's very important to uh, uh, adapt to the audience because otherwise, as an architect, you can really appear to be a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> quite quite fast <laughs> because you know the way we as architects here talk about buildings is 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 not very understandable no. to a lot of people i guess um 
but I don't I don't think that's really a problem. It's always been like that, you know. <laughs> Even if you if you read a, a Palladio, uh, you know the the uh, Quattro Libri, I guess the four did four books he wrote. I don't know <laughs> or ten. I can't remember it. But anyway, so I, I only read. I only tried it for a few minutes. But it's like it's, it's really like how you run a farm and uh, and where you put the cattle and you know it's it's. The, it's and we we just talk about you know proportions and uh and and you know layers and 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 composition when we talk about palladio but yeah he also had to talk about cattle and <laughs> sheep and hay and stuff like that most of the time mm. Yeah, I, I think that I think that's all for this evening. Then um, I'll, I'll sort of let you get off with your evening. But um, yeah, thank you very much for coming this evening. So yeah, it was, was nice. um, I hope it's been sort of uh, a vague break from just presenting uh, constant presentations. But um, but yeah, if, if you ever want to come to Sheffield again in in person, then I'm sure we'd uh, we'd be able to try and make something happen. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I believe next week we've got a lecture from ISOR. Um, if, if Hannah's here, she might be able to tell us a bit more about what's coming up, but i um, not sure whether she is. Um, Will, you look like you're going to say something. There are, there are, um, oh, Hannah's there. Sorry, I don't. My Wi Fi is very good. I was just moving room. And um, yeah, we've got Armand Nuri from um, I Saw Magazine next week. So that should be an interesting take. Um, so yeah, make sure to tune in for that one. Okay, great. Thanks for having me. I, I hope was, uh, the, the format was okay. And uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> it was quite, yeah, quite refreshing actually from, okay. yeah, um, from normal. So yeah, nice to have a sort of more discussional. Yeah. A format, I guess. But yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Doug. Okay, Brilliant. have a good evening. Cheers. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, you nice Bye. You. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. See everyone.